Hello and welcome to day 60 of Immerse. Today we'll begin reading the Gospel of Matthew, uh, but first the introduction. A generation after Jesus lived, the Jews living in northern Israel and Syria, who believed in Jesus as their Messiah, faced a strong challenge. During the Jewish-Roman War in AD 60 to AD 70, most Jews in southern Israel moved north, safely away from the fighting around Jerusalem. But the subsequent destruction of the Jerusalem temple raised troubling questions for the Jews. Without the temple, what was the future of Judaism? Where would they find their focus and identity? Groups led by the Pharisees argued that they should focus on a recommitment <clears throat> to the law of Moses as an interpreted in Israel's traditions. These Pharisees saw the followers of Jesus as a threat to this renewal, especially since Jesus offered new answers to their questions. So the Pharisees sought to expel Jesus' followers from the synagogues, cutting off their ties to the Jewish community. The Gospel of Matthew was written to help these followers of Jesus meet this challenge and remain faithful. Although later tradition identifies the author as the Apostle Matthew, the book never names its author. Matthew's message is that Jesus really is the culmination of all that came before. Hence, Matthew highlights various ways that Jesus fulfills and continues the Jewish story as told in their first testament. First, Matthew presents a list of Jesus' ancestors, organizing it into three groups of 14 generations each. The first group identifies Jesus as a descendant of Abraham, whose calling launched Israel's story. The second group confirms that Jesus is also the descendant of David, Israel's great king. The third group of 14 begins with Israel's exile in Babylon, highlighting that Jesus has come, quote, to save his people from their sins. The list can also be viewed as six groups of seven, presenting Jesus as beginning the seventh seven, a special number of completion in Judaism. Matthew is presenting Jesus as the new beginning that God's people have been waiting for. Second, Matthew portrays Jesus as a new Moses by recording parallels between the two figures. As babies, they both escaped a pagan king who was trying to kill Hebrew boys. In addition, they both lived in Egypt for a time, brought the people instruction from God, and went up on a mountain just before departing. Jesus by death, I'm sorry, Moses by death, Jesus by ascension, urging God's people to go into the land and live under God's reign. Third, Matthew connects Jesus to Israel's story by organizing Jesus' life into five books. The organizational pattern reflects the Torah, the five books of Moses. In each of these books, Matthew first describes what Jesus did and then presents what Jesus taught. After teaching uh, section transitions to the next book, I'm sorry, each teaching section transitions to the next book with some version of the phrase when Jesus had finished saying these things. Overall, this combination of action and teaching reveals the present expression of God's renewal in our world, which Matthew calls the kingdom of heaven. Matthew's five books explore five themes. First, the foundation of the kingdom of heaven are built on a deeper righteousness that leads people to act as true children of your Father in heaven. Number two, the mission of the kingdom of heaven demonstrates the mercy and compassion of God by bringing people freedom from disease and oppression. Third, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven is that it begins in barely noticeable ways and advances through suffering and sacrifice. Fourth, the family of the kingdom of heaven comprises a new community marked by forgiveness, love, and restoration. 
Fifth, the destiny of the kingdom of heaven is to bear witness to Jesus despite persecution until the good news about him has been proclaimed to all nations. Matthew's story culminates with Jesus winning the decisive victory over God's great enemies, sin and death. In Israel's story, God's ancient rescue of his people from Egypt formed the pattern for all of God's subsequent acts of salvation. The Passover meal illustrates this pattern, and Matthew shows Jesus observing the Passover meal with his twelve disciples and instituting a new covenant right before his own sacrificial death and powerful resurrection. Jesus has brought a new exodus, a great new rescue of his people. Jesus, the Messiah, has carried Israel's story to its decisive moment. When the good news of God's kingdom is announced to the whole world. And now the Gospel of Matthew. This is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, the descendant of David and Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Amenadab. Amenadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of, of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Ammon. Ammon was the father of Josiah. Josiah was the father of Jehoiakim and his brothers born at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the Babylon exile, Jehoiakim was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abiad. Abiad was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim. Achim was the father of Eliad. Eliad was the father of Eleazar. Eleazar was the father of Mathan. Mathan was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylon exile, and 14 from, from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look! The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, 
he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men came from eastern lands and arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, and you will, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time that the star first appeared. And then he told them, Go to Jerusalem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with great joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up! Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who are trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene. Now in those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all of the Jordan Valley went out to see and to hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? 
Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you that God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. And even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to, to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire.